hello welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Courtney and I always want to take time to thank my new and returning viewers for clicking on this video and spending some time with me today two things I want to say before I get started one my neighbor right across the street is mowing grass with a very large and a very loud lawnmower um, when I go to edit this video I'm going to try my darndest to block that out um, but if you can hear it, I am so sorry. And number two, look at my shirt. I love it. Okay, but in all seriousness, this case is ridiculous. They are all ridiculous, but this is just pure evil. I'm not going to make y'all listen to me blabber, so I'm going to jump right into it. Today, we are talking about Stacy at Castor. Have you heard of her? She is a monster who was born on July 24th. 1967 in Weedsport, New York. She met her first husband, Michael Wallace, when she was just 17. This was in 1985 and it was just like a love at first sight kind of thing. They bonded immediately. They were very, very like head over heels for each other and they got married very quickly. They had their first daughter, Ashley, in 1988 and then in 1991, they had their second daughter, Brie. Stacy Castor was employed by an ambulance dispatch company and her husband, Michael Wallace, worked nights as a mechanic. Now, the family did not have a lot of money, but they were always able to make ends meet. So they were just kind of like going through the motions of everyday life. One thing that Michael Wallace did have a big love for was set allegedly was drugs and alcohol. So I'm sure that did not help with the money situation. According to Stacy Castor, Michael was very close to their daughter Brie and showed a lot of favoritism towards her. So Stacy took favoritism to the oldest daughter, Ashley. So there was favoritism on both ends and it seemed like both of the girls kind of knew that like, okay, dad likes Brie better, mom likes Ashley better. So later in their marriage, it was rumored that Michael Wallace was having affairs. The two just kind of grew apart as husband and wife. And by the end of 1999, Stacy was ready to file for divorce. However, like I said, it was the end of 1999. Holidays were coming up, Thanksgiving, Christmas. So she thought, okay, I'm going to wait it out until the beginning of the year. And I'm not going to cause all of this family drama, divorce issues, awkwardness for the holidays. So let's wait until the beginning of the year and then we can get this ball rolling. However, around the holiday season is when Michael Wallace started to become very sick. And I mean very, very sick. It was gradual, it started slow, but then it just really hit him hard. He was very weak, he was groggy, he was vomiting. And during a Christmas Eve dinner with family, his family said that he even looked very swollen. So his family was like, listen, Michael, you've got to see a doctor after, you know, if you want to go after the holidays, you, you got to see a doctor. So they convinced him, um, but unfortunately, Michael did not make it that long. On January 11th, 2000, Michael Wallace passed away on his couch, and his death was ruled to be a heart attack. He was only 38 years old, so his family really didn't think this was right, because up until him getting sick, Michael had no health issues whatsoever, so his family was really pushing for an autopsy, but Stacy refused. She said, no, if the doctor said it was a heart attack, then it was a heart attack. So Stacy planned a small funeral. She collected life insurance money, about $50,000. She took a vacation with her kids, and she moved on with her life. Three years later, in 2003, Stacy married her second husband, David Castor. David was the owner of an air conditioning installation and repair company, and Stacy worked as his office manager. They both had children from previous marriages. Stacy had Ashley and Bree, and David had a son who was a grown adult, not really around too much. You know, he was grown up. He was off doing his own thing. And it was said that David didn't really get along with Stacy's girls too much. He was kind of in that mindset where I raised my one and only child. I do not want to have the responsibility of other children. So there was just a lot of tension in the house. And I'm sure, of course, you know, the girls are not going to be too happy because they pretty recently lost their father and now their mother remarried to this guy that doesn't even want them around. So lots and lots of tension on Stacy and David's second wedding anniversary. You know, it was coming up and he said, we need to take a vacation. Just me and you, just David and Stacy get some alone time, but it was going to be a two week vacation. And Stacy did not want to leave her girls for that long period of time. So this sparked an argument which was said to have lasted several hours and it ended with 
Stacy sending her girls to her mother's home and Michael grabbing a bottle of whiskey, locking himself in their bedroom and refusing to talk, refusing to come out, nothing. So Stacy left for the weekend thinking that maybe they just needed to spend some time apart and everything would be fine. But that Monday morning, she still had not heard from David. So she's worried. She calls 911 and she explains to the operator, listen, me and my husband, we had this big fight over the weekend. He took some whiskey, locked himself in the bedroom, and I haven't heard from him in days. So I can't get in the bedroom. I'm afraid to go in the bedroom. I need police to come out for a wellness check. Stacy was really afraid that David might have hurt himself while he was alone and possibly drunk, locked in their bedroom. So police come out, they have to kick down the door, and when they do, they find David Castor lying face down on his bed and he is deceased. Stacy was said to have been absolutely hysterical, crying, just freaking out. And when police look around the bedroom a little bit more, they find this glass of green liquid sitting on the nightstand and then they look around a little more they find a bottle of cranberry juice and they find an empty bottle of antifreeze under the bed it was empty and the lid was off of it and it was under the bed so really weird and then they also found a turkey baster in their trash can it was determined pretty quickly that the green substance that was in the glass on the nightstand was in fact antifreeze the coroner reported that david castor took his own life through a lethal amount of antifreeze but the police disagreed if you are going to take your own life ingesting antifreeze is a heck of a way to do it it is a very slow and agonizing process when you ingest antifreeze your body breaks it down and crystallizes it and this is very very dangerous depending on how much you ingest the earliest symptoms can develop within 30 minutes to 12 hours after ingestion and the earliest symptoms of antifreeze poisoning include headache fatigue lack of coordination grogginess, slurred speech, nausea, vomiting. Now, the longer that your body starts to break down the antifreeze, that's when it's going to interfere with kidney, lung, brain, nervous system function. And within 24 to 72 hours after ingestion, you're going to suffer organ failure. Most deaths from antifreeze poisoning are caused by kidney failure. So just a really, really agonizing way to go. So the turkey baster and the glass of antifreeze were of course tested for DNA and they found David's DNA on the tip of the turkey baster, but they found Stacy's fingerprints on the glass of antifreeze. And the position of Stacy's fingerprints were like she was holding the glass from the bottom, kind of like helping David take drinks. And then police believed that once David became too weak, he was then force fed alcohol and antifreeze from that turkey baster. And the weirdest part about this i think is that stacy had david buried right next to michael so police wiretapped stacy's home and they're trying to listen for any unusual conversation they also set up cameras along her home and they set up cameras at the graveyard where both of her late husbands are buried right beside each other and they think okay if stacy is really distraught if she cares truly about these men like she says that she does and she puts on this show, then she will at least go and visit the grave sites. She never does. So the police thought Stacy was super suspicious, so they decide to have Michael Wallace's body exhumed. It was found in a toxicology report that Michael Wallace had passed away from antifreeze poisoning. Now in September of 2007, Stacy learns that police are starting to close in on her because of what they found in Michael Wallace's toxicology report. Now at this time, it is also Stacy's oldest daughter, Ashley's first day of college. So she's at college, investigators come to her university to question her about her father, Michael Wallace's death. They also let Stacy know that, hey, it was not a heart attack, it was poisoning. So Ashley is distraught, she calls her mother Stacy, and Stacy says, oh my gosh, I heard about this too, I'm so upset, why don't you leave school, come on over, and we'll have a drink. Stacy said that they had both been through so much emotional distress, they needed to just relax. So Ashley trusts her mother, she agrees, and she comes by for a drink. Then the next day, Stacy calls Ashley again and says, hey, let's do this again, come on over. So remember, Ashley growing up was Stacy's favorite. So Ashley thinks at this point, this is just her and her mother bonding through a very traumatic time in their lives. So. Ashley leaves school, she comes over to her mother's house again, and they have more drinks. 
Ashley said that her mother offered her a really nasty looking drink and at first she was like that's disgusting I'm not drinking this what is it because of course Ashley didn't mix these drinks. She wasn't a drinker. I don't even think she had ever really drank before. She had barely just gotten into college, so she wasn't at the drinking age. So she doesn't know any better. And Stacy says, oh my gosh, drink it. I know it looks nasty, but it's delicious. Try it. She has no reason to not trust her own mother, so Ashley drinks it. 17 hours later, Ashley was found unconscious in her bed by her younger sister, Brie. Brie, of course, is freaking out. She demands her mother to call 911. So Stacy calls 911 and she's all distraught. She's saying that her daughter Ashley, she found a whole bottle of vodka, empty bottle of vodka in her bedroom. She found some pills and she also found a note. This note was not handwritten, but it was typed, which was weird, but okay. But this typed note, and it was a really, really long note, and I'm just gonna summarize it. It was pretty much a confession. This was a confession from Ashley saying that when she was only 11 or 12 years old, that she took the life of her father, Michael, and she also took the life of her stepfather, David, and she did them both with antifreeze. Ashley is rushed to the hospital, and she is just like teetering between life and death, but thankfully, she pulls through, and once she's awake, police are just like swarming her room, asking her questions, and Ashley says the last thing she remembers is her mother giving her a drink. That's the last thing she remembers, and she noted that it was something that her mother had never done before in the past, and she also has no idea anything about a note. She's super confused about all of the questions that police are asking her. So while standing outside of the hospital, Stacy was arrested for the murder of David Castor and the attempted murder of her daughter Ashley. Stacy pled not guilty to everything and said that the whole thing was her daughter Ashley. Prosecutors argued that this typed confession note was not typed out by Ashley, it was actually typed out by Stacy. When Ashley was brought to the stand, she testified that she absolutely did not take the life of her father or her stepfather and she had no clue where this note even came from. I also watched a video of Ashley in court and it was so, so heartbreaking to just listen to her cry and break down and talk about how she has no clue how her own mother could do something like this to her. District Attorney William Fitzpatrick and Chief Assistant Direct Attorney Christine Garvey said that David Castor's taking of his own life never made sense in the first place because there were no fingerprints of his that was on the turkey baster or the glass of antifreeze. They think for four days, Stacy force fed David the antifreeze and the alcohol through the turkey baster when he became too weak to take drinks from the glass that had her fingerprints on the bottom of it. The prosecutors also showed evidence about how your body breaks down antifreeze into like the little crystals I mentioned earlier. And this was found in both Michael Wallace and David Castor's bodies. They also claimed insurance money as a motive for Stacy doing this to both of her husbands. Like I said, she collected 50,000 from her first husband, Michael Wallace. And then by the time her second husband passed away, she collected a little over $200,000. And her second husband's will was changed. So everything that he owned, every penny, every physical item that he owned, did not go to his son from his previous marriage. Everything went to Stacy. After searching Stacy's computer, prosecutors also found several drafts saved of this note that Ashley wrote. Forensic investigators also found that based on timestamps, this letter was typed out and saved as drafts at the timeline that Ashley would have been in school. So there was no possible way that Ashley could have typed out this letter. And remember earlier I said that they wiretapped Stacy's home? Around the timestamp that this typed out letter would have been saved in a draft, you can hear what sounds like typing sounds on the line. So really the only thing that Stacy's defense team attorneys could do was create reasonable doubt. So they were trying to take a fine tooth comb to Ashley's entire life to find a motive that she was actually the one to take the lives of her father and stepfather. They said the reason why she took the life of her biological father was because he showed favoritism towards her sister Brie and not her. And then the reason why she took the life of her stepfather is because the house was very, like I said, a lot of tension. They didn't get along. So that was what they were really set on. And what's so sad 
is that Ashley's own grandmother, Stacy's mother, believed that Ashley was guilty. District Attorney William Fitzpatrick said that it was really odd that Stacy's past history of working as a ambulance dispatcher, that she didn't seek any type of medical care for her daughter Ashley for 17 hours. She didn't seek medical care until Bree found her and forced her mother to call 911. So, on February 5th, 2009, Stacy Castor was found guilty of second degree murder in the poisoning of David Castor and attempted second degree murder for almost killing her own daughter, Ashley. She was sentenced to 25 years to life for David Castor and another 25 years for the attempted murder of Ashley. And then she got another one and a half to four years on top of that for forging David's will. However, on June 11th, 2016, Stacy Castor was found dead in her prison cell. It was ultimately determined that Stacy Castor died of a heart attack, which is very, very ironic because that's what she wanted everyone to believe that her first husband died from. So that is the case of Stacy Castor. What the heck? The fact that not only she poisoned both of her husbands for life insurance money, but that she was going to try to frame her oldest daughter, the one that was supposedly her favorite growing up. And to the very end, she denied, denied, denied everything. She never admitted to anything. She always said that it was Ashley. I want to hear your thoughts on this case down in the comments. Please let me know what you think. And like always, stay safe and I will see you next week. Bye!